Hi guys, my name's Adrian and in today's video I wanted to talk about freelancing and how to deliver on freelancing from start to end. Because when I was starting out I really wasn't too sure what to do and being able to have a number of guidelines and tools or something like that would have really helped me out. And doing all the sort of stuff like the initial engagement with a client and trying to figure out the pricing and then after that actually creating a plan for the project and a wireframe and developing it and then handing it over. All of these things were complicated and I didn't know how to do them but there are lots of tools out there that help you on this journey and I, I wanted to share some of the ways that I go about this in today's video. But before we get started, we're going to hear from today's sponsor and today's sponsor is actually from Kyle. He's from Study Web Development and he's got a great freelancing bundle that you guys can check out. It covers all sorts of stuff such as how to do invoicing, how to do a client engagement and freelancing in general. There's more than 3000 people that have signed up to his bundle there and it's a great bundle which even has checklists on what to do and how to go about freelancing really well. I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you guys can check that out and there'll be a discount in there for you guys as well so I'll put a discount in too. Otherwise let's jump into this video. Now the very first thing that we need to do when we do freelancing is to be able to do the initial engagement and this is really important. I'm going to assume that you already have a client in mind and maybe you've already talked about doing some work for them or maybe they've asked you to do some work for them. The initial engagement is trying to clarify this bit of work. You need to be able to figure out what the scope is and what they actually want. There's a few different items here that are really important to be able to do. From this list, the normal first most important thing is to know what the objective for the piece of work is. And this is whether it's a website or an app or something in between and what that is that you're trying to do. Are you trying to solve a problem or fix a problem or create a solution? All of that is figuring out the objective for that piece of work. Once you've figured that out, you need to really understand the expectations from the client. And this is really important because you want to make sure that the expectations that they have and you have are at the same level. Because if it's not, then you might have some conflicts that happen later on in the project and you don't want to be able to have those. So it's really good to ground those expectations with good examples of the scope and the quality that they want to be able to deliver for their job. And this is usually done by creating some examples or passing um, some quality of work that they assume you'll be doing in comparison so that they know that you'll be able to deliver on that and you have an expectation of what they want as well. After that, it's really important to be able to get the timeline for the project because some people, they don't really mind how long it takes, whereas other people, they might have a really short timeline where they need it due as soon as possible. And this is usually the case for most websites and apps, but it's good to be able to know this because you can then factor this into the next point. And the next point is sorting out the pricing. Now the pricing is really important and it's based on obviously the expectation the client has, the scope and quality of the project, and the actual timeline. This is why those first three are really important to bring up as a discussion. You don't simply say that this is about the cost for the website or this is my hourly rate. No, you need to be able to do those first three items and from those you need to be able to extrapolate a price. Now there's lots of different ways to do pricing. You can do pricing per an hour and that's usually easy when you're getting started. Of course you can do um, project based pricing and this is where you just give a single number for the project where you estimate how long it should take and maybe add a little bit of a buffer if it's going to take you longer just in case. The other type of pricing, and this is the one that I usually like to do, is actually value-based pricing. And it's a little bit more complicated and I recommend you guys check that out, but it's where you price the project on the actual thing that it's doing. So whether it's making a lot of money, you have to value the price of the value that you're creating through that website and maybe take a portion of that. Or if you're saving a problem that's costing the business hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, you figure out how much money you can essentially essentially save them and again you take a portion of that as the value based proposition and that's another good way to do website pricing but it's a little bit more complicated to explain sometimes. 
But once you've figured that out, once you've figured out the pricing, the best thing to do is be able to organize a contract where you get paid for the work. And this usually I like to keep simple, maybe 50% on initial engagement and then 50% on, um, on completion. And this makes sure that both parties are at the same level and they agree and both have some stake in the game. Now, once that's done, we can move on to the first part of doing a website or an app. And in this, in freelancing, you really need to be able to do this in small gradual steps. So the next part I usually do is um, wireframing and design. And this is where you make a small project plan of what you're planning to do. And if you're building out a website and you need to do a wireframe, but the budget's small, sometimes you just use some templates. And this step is really simple because you just create or grab a couple of URLs of templates that might be similar to the expectations of the client. And you can actually create the, um, you can send an email to them and show them so that they can decide which ones they like and which ones they don't. But if you're doing a custom design or something custom in general, it's really good to be able to jump into Figma or Sketch or Adobe XD and create some mockups, just really high level stuff based on the expectation of the client of what you'll be providing. If you do this, everyone is on the same page and those expectations of what you're delivering based on the initial um, engagement are at the same point and everyone is pretty happy. And then you can keep moving on to actually designing the content of the website or the app. And this is the part where you flesh out that wireframe. You add in the colors, you add in the content. Sometimes people like to share their Figma board in so that the client can put in their own content and images that they want. But in this case, you're really fleshing out what's already been agreed to and all those expectations of what you're delivering are always at that same level so there's no confusion between yourself and the client during the design phase because you're taking them on a journey where you're building this out really well with them and they're happy along the way if there's any issues they can raise them as you're building out the design and the wireframe and you can fix them immediately rather than very late into the game where you might be already delivering the project after you've finished up the design, it's really important to sit down and talk to the client. And you want to talk to them about the design you created. You want to reiterate that journey and that expectation that they initially engaged you with. And you have to show them how you've provided that. And you show this by showing up the design with the expectation and show them how you've created exactly what they wanted. This will keep both parties on the same page and keep them very happy. And it'll continue that journey of freelancing, making it a lot easier because with freelancing sometimes you don't get to sit there with a client working with them one-on-one -on -one. so these points of contact where you're showing the design showing the wireframe are really important to keep people engaged finally once you've got the design and the project all ready we can start developing it and this is both the easiest but the longest period where you've already created a scope of work and you've agreed to the design of how this will be done and now you just create it so normally I like to create an MVP on a development URL where the client gets to see the development or the design. There's no confusion of what's going on. And if there are revisions that need to be made, they can be made immediately. But otherwise, once that's done and the development is finished, there's going to be that part where simply putting it live is the last step. So that is the full journey that I normally do when I do freelancing work. Now, it's really important to make sure that once the work is finished in freelancing, that you sign off on the contract. You want to be able to tell them that these are the final lot of changes and these are the final bits of work and that you're happy to do more work with them in the future. But this means that they're going to have to ask you for another engagement or another piece of work. And this is where you might pass in your hourly rate. So if they have additional changes and work to do, then you can do that too. But otherwise, this is how I do freelancing. This is the workflow that I normally do. But I'd love to know what you guys do as well. Let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.